In Arizona, legends tell of a mysterious creature called the Red Ghost. A giant red horse-like creature reported to be over 30 feet tall with a pale skeleton rider on its back. The first reported sighting was in 1883 when two ranchers were out tending to their cattle. One of their wives who remained home heard her dogs barking and looked out to see what she described as, quote, a huge reddish colored beast ridden by a devilish looking creature. When the two men returned, they found the other wife had been trampled to death. And after following the strange footprints left behind at the scene, they found tufts of red fur. More reports continued throughout the area, all of which included one common detail, red hair. In one report, a group of prospectors fired at the beast, failing to kill it, but knocking something loose from his back. It turned out to be a human skull with flesh and hair still on it. These sorts of local folk tales and ghost stories are not unique to Arizona. But what is unique about this particular story is that it seems to be mostly true. In 1893, a farmer named Mizu Hastings actually managed to shoot and kill the red ghost while it was eating grass on his property. The red ghost turned out to actually be a red camel, and the pale rider was a human skeleton that had been tied to the beast so tightly that there were scars where the ropes had cut into his flanks. Nobody knows how or why the dead man was tied to the beast, but fortunately, we do have a good idea of how a camel came to be wandering the deserts of Arizona in the first place. And that is a bit of a weird story in and of itself. The area that would later become known as Arizona was ceded to the U.S. in the Treaty of Hidalgo in 1848 following the Mexican-American War, and the U.S. Army was tasked with protecting this new territory. In 1853, President Franklin Pierce appointed then-Senator Jefferson Davis to the Secretary of War. Yes, this is the same Jefferson Davis who would later be the President of the Confederate States of America. Davis had a novel idea for how to protect these new desert territories by using camels. The idea of using camels in the U.S. Army had actually been pitched decades earlier by Army Lieutenant George Crossman, stating, For strength in carrying burdens, for patient endurance of labor, and privation of food, water, and rest, and in some respects speed also, the camel is unrivaled among animals. This idea was largely ignored for almost 10 years until U.S. Army Major Henry Wayne decided to conduct an official Army study on camels. Wayne's reports confirmed that camels were much more capable pack animals than horses or even mules, and able to carry much heavier loads much further with fewer brakes. Based on these reports, Jefferson Davis successfully petitioned Congress to procure an experimental Camel Corps, and in 1855, Major Wayne traveled throughout Tunisia, Turkey, and Egypt, recruiting 33 camels and five camel drivers. Of this first batch, only one camel died while crossing the Atlantic, but two calves were born, meaning a net gain of one camel, proving yet again how robust these animals were. After unloading the camels in Texas, Major Wayne led the first batch to their new stable at Camp Verde, while his crew sailed back to pick up an additional 41 camels, as well as 10 more camel drivers. Some of these camel drivers became legends in their own right, and they deserve their own video, such as Yorgos Greek George Caralambo, who played a key role in capturing one of the most famous California bandits in history, Tiburcio Vazquez. Or there's the lead camel driver, who went by the curious name of High Jolly. His real name was Haj Ali, but say that enough with a southern accent, and you can see how it got transformed into High Jolly. High Jolly later helped General Crook defeat the Apache leader Geronimo. But back to the camels. 
These animals were instrumental in several military campaigns. The first of them being a reconnaissance mission to check out a new road to be built from Fort Defiance, New Mexico, all the way to the Colorado River on the border of California. But the camels would have to begin their journey at Camp Verde, Texas, a journey of over 1,000 miles. The leader of this expedition, Lieutenant Beale, was quoted saying, I'd rather have one camel than four mules. On another reconnaissance mission, ordered by Robert E. Lee, who was the commander of the Department of Texas at the time, three mules died on the journey, and another nine mules were left behind at Fort Davis as they were deemed to be unable to continue. However, all of the camels were in perfect health at the end of the campaign. Robert E. Lee wrote to the Secretary of War that, of camels whose endurance, docility, and sagacity will not fail to attract attention of the Secretary of War, and but for whose reliable services the reconnaissance would have failed. Despite this, the Camel Corps was canceled shortly after this, due mostly to the American Civil War. However, many of the camels, including those owned by High Jolly and Greek George, were released into the wild. For decades, camels could be seen roaming across the southwest, even from Los Angeles all the way to San Antonio. And it is believed that one of those camels, perhaps one released by High Jolly himself, may have been the Red Ghost. <laughs>